Oh, thank you guys for coming by. If you're new, I'm loving my Twitch. We got a couple Twitch goals that you can help me reach if you'd like. Trying to get 10,000 Twitch follows before the end of the month. That's just a goal I have set. I'm at 9,200, I believe. So if you can help me reach my goal, if you have not given me a follow, give me a follow. Uh, if you have been following for a little bit and you like, and go ahead and give me a sub. Uh, but there's a lot of ways you can support the podcast. You should know them if you've been here before. Uh, rating and subscribe and just leaving a review, letting people find out more about the podcast. If you get something out about it, word of mouth is also great. I uh, know this podcast is a um, good for some people and other people they don't need anything from it but maybe you know somebody who needs affirmations needs a little boost needs a little positivity and they want this podcast tell them about it that would help me out um also i have my shirts on comedianteas.com you can get yourself a getting better shirt an affirmation shirt a ron funches shirt as well uh just go to comedianteas.com it's in the ron funches store uh patreon as well patreon.com slash getting better with ron we have many levels where you can support us we do shout outs on the podcast as well as i guess i should probably look those up because i probably have some uh, shout out on the podcast. I give you a thank you note uh, where you can get your own personal affirmation. If you're feeling like you need a little cheerleader on your side, you need a personal boost, a hype man in your life. I can do that for you. Uh, that starts at just the $10 level. And then it, um, we've been giving out these cool little pins and you don't really have to do anything to get those pins. That just if you've been if you fucks with me and you fucks with me heavy. I end up sending you one of these pins. They are not for sale. Uh, they are just a way for me to show how much I care about you for caring about me. Ooh, let's do a Patreon goal. We're at 189 Patreons. Let's get that up to two Patrons. Let's get that <laughs> up to 200. Let's get it up to round. We love round numbers round here. Uh, okay, so here we got some thank you shout outs due. My man, Greg. I already got you, Greg, but you're going to get one again. I remember doing this one already. I didn't mark it complete. Greg, I love you. You remember that. Oh, I know this guy. He is one of my Twitch followers. My man, Anthony. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for following me on Twitch as well as supporting me on the Patreon. You're a cool dude to hang out and play Among Us with. Uh, and I appreciate you. Brad, my main man. Oh, Brad's out here killing it out there in Minnesota as a true king among men. Uh, uh, no one has ever been able to defeat him. Uh, maybe just temporarily cause him setbacks. But overall, you cannot you can only hope to contain him. You cannot defeat him. Uh, <laughs> that's Brad. Oh, my man, Shuggy. Shuggy, one of the, the original members of the Funch Bunch, one of the first people came into the stream on Twitch. He's also a Patreon supporter. I love Shuggy. You got I mean, I'm just real. Honestly, you're a real positive in, in, individual. Uh, you bring a lot of positive energy anytime you're on the stream. Uh, you seem like a real cool dude. Anybody, anytime anyone's feeling down or something, you're always there for them. Uh, so I want to let you know I'm there for you. Uh, you seem like a great guy, Shuggy, and I appreciate you. Uh, my man Jonah, love that name. Out there in Bethesda, they make Skyrim over there. So... <laughs> They make Skyrim where you live. I, I hope it's, it was probably terrible over there. You're probably getting over encumbered all the time. Uh, <laughs> and last but not least, but not least, I believe it is our girl Tiff. I don't know if this is a different Tiff or if this is the Tiff that's in the Twitch stream right now. But I love you both. Either way, you guys are great people, sweet, wonderful human beings, and I appreciate you supporting the podcast. Uh, if you want to shout out on the podcast, if you want your own personal affirmation, if you want a t-shirt sent to you, if you want uh, posters, things of that nature, that's fine. If you want to get yourself these exclusive Funch Club pens that nobody has, go to patreon.com slash getting better with Ron. And I'm sorry, I kind of stumbled a little bit because I just saw an email saying I got an uh, audition for what we do in the shadows. And that's, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, do I want to self-tape for this? Fuck yeah, I want to self-tape for this. Fuck yes, I do. Let's get started and get right into the affirmations. I hope you're feeling strong. I hope you're feeling brave. I hope you're feeling loved. I hope you're feeling grateful for that love. 
I hope you know, again, I know I keep bringing up this word, but overwhelmed by everything that's going on. There is an abundance. There's an onslaught of news and things that people tell you as news. Apparently, everybody had opinions about a fly uh, that I, I don't give a shit to talk about. Um, <laughs> But apparently that's what comedy is right now, uh, talking about a fly. Um, <laughs> well, most of all, I hope you're finding your happiness. I hope you're 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 getting out of the funk that things have been going on. I know financially things are super weird right now. Uh, I think the more that we, because like me, if you've been like me, you, you're missing a lot of income from the from March up until now. Uh, and just getting things back going um so it can be very stressful but i think one of the positive things I, i've noticed and again i want to be very practical i always skip over some of the practical stuff as i've said before if you if you qualify or if you even think you qualify even if you don't think you fucking need them if you're like oh we doing all right things is just tight but you qualify go get on them food stamps right now go get on on public assistance whatever you can apply for whatever you 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 qualify for go get on it now before you you because things are only going to continue to get worse there's going to be more and more people trying to get on it and you're going to be sitting through more and more red tape and they always try to deny you on the for for the first time and then you then 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 you then they give it to you they always give in at the end that's my that's my recollection of working with the government is that true for you ho mm -hmm. yes because <laughs> as we know you know i might be doing i got a whole bunch of action figures behind me now but that's not where i come from uh you know i used to be on, on public assistance and food stamps and especially while i was coming up as a stand-up comedian and, and not having knowing where my next money was and my next gig was it was very helpful for me to know that i could at least provide food and provide things for my son and myself if uh, i could go into a walmart and buy a tuna sandwich so uh get on that don't let your pride stop you don't be a fucking weirdo about it um and then if you don't need it get off of it you know that's that's how i look at it it's our fucking money that's the whole thing that's one of the biggest tricks that the government plays on us they're like oh we don't even right now right what they're doing they, they're saying well, we can't talk about getting any more money any more help uh supplemental income until after the election which is basically kind of like holding your votes hostage that's how i view it it's like oh well let's talk about it let's see how y'all niggas act and then i'll decide if papa trump won't break off some money <laughs> uh it's what it feels like to me uh but i'm not a, you know a political pundit by any any means uh but that's our money and yet they find ways to, to funnel it into to uh military and wars and things like that but when it comes to public assistance they pull a, a pull a shame around it they put a um they act like it's not available but that's our money that's what we pay taxes for all of us except apparently the president uh but i pay a shit ton in taxes and so i would in turn like you to use that money instead of a fucking new military vehicle or some taser shields or shit like that i'd rather know that the tax money the six figures in tax money and i know i didn't need to give an amount but i fucking wanted to <laughs> <laughs> that I spend, I want it to go with people who need it. That makes me feel good. And it reminds me of where I came from when I didn't have it and I needed that. So to me, it's just part of the circle of life. And so uh, I, I just hope you're taking advantage of that if you can and just being proactive and being uh, uh, the what you want to be, the grasshopper or the ant? Which one is bad? The ant, right? You want to be the ant, not the grasshopper. I don't remember. One of them starves in the wintertime. Don't be that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So plan now while it's fall because you see things. Um, going up the covid numbers are going up more people getting sick on a friend of mine got sick recently um you know it's just things are still there and i know a lot of us are just sick of it i know i'm sick of it and bored with it and i just want to get back 
to my regular life and, and act like things are back to normal, but they they aren't and they may never be. And we have to address this and still go out into the world and still be active and still be brave, but at the same time, still be cautious and take care of ourselves and take care of our family, um, which is a balance and act. Again, I'm going out. Oh, that's something I should have plugged in the very beginning. I'll probably make a separate plug for it. Um, next weekend, it'll be my first show since March during where I'm doing hours out on the road. I'll be at the Denver Comedy Works South Club, uh, October 15th through the 17th if you're in Denver. And if you're not in Denver, hey, guess what? They're doing a live stream option for the Friday and Saturday early shows. If you want to watch me do comedy with our good buddy Gabe Dinger, uh, come watch as the tickets are for the live stream are ten dollars the tickets for the live event in denver are just a little bit more so come on by and see me do what i love and um and i'm be grateful for anyone that shows up and anyone who watches online that's been one of the things that's been um the most positive of this negative situation is that i'm much more aware of like oh this time on stage it might be my last time which is a good way to live you know, or with anything you do, like this could be the last thing I do it. This could be the last time I see my son. This could be the last time I talk to my wife and um, act accordingly. And, you know, that doesn't mean we're not going to get in arguments. That's still going to happen. But I did a show yesterday uh, outside in this little just in Echo Park where I used to live when I first moved to Los Angeles. And I remember being so scared and and broke and not knowing what my life would be like but how exciting and alive and how fun and weird everything seemed and that's kind of how things seem now a lot of people are moving away a lot of things are changing and um i'm still always of the belief that change is good and change is positive and i just hope people oh we'll save that for the next intro but just be active be positive embrace change don't be a stick in the mud with things. Be adaptive. Be nimble like the bunny. That's what Mushrooms told me a couple weeks ago. Um, and so I've been spreading that message anywhere I can. <laughs> you got to be nimble, ready to adapt, ready to adjust. And mostly just still hold on to your happiness and be grateful for, for the life that we have, even if it's not exactly what you want. Uh, which is what were we at time wise? Because now that's gonna get me into the thing. Okay, let's go into the second one. We gotta do two episodes. I'm sorry. Uh, so <laughs> we're gonna finish this thought on that affirmation on the next week's episode. So I hope you enjoyed this week's guest. He's a great friend of mine, uh, a great comedian, writer, actor. You might see him his work on Big Time Rush. Uh, just a fuck great show. One of the great show producers in, in Los Angeles. I always love doing his show. Um, and it was just really fun conversation with him. We have a great conversation with Steven Glickman. Enjoy it. I'm doing pretty good. How you guys doing? Oh, good. You're such a ray of sunshine. <laughs> so are you. Thank so are you. you. So what were you doing? You were doing your podcast at the Impro? Yeah, we uh, we we had we interviewed Leah Thompson today from mm -hmm. Back to the Future. Yeah, I know her. Yeah, and we talked, to, and we had an interview with uh, Luis Guzman from uh, Boogie Nights. We did those interviews today. It was good. It was yeah. good. I like both those people. Yeah. Yeah, it was my first time being at the Improv since my God, I don't know, March. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. how did it feel oh it felt i mean it felt great being anywhere it feels good being anywhere right now you know yes i like yeah. going to the dentist talking to my dentist shout out to doreen how are you doing doreen <laughs> sometimes she listens to the podcast she might listen to this one because i said her name uh, <laughs> i I, I had to go to the dentist for a crown and I was like doing material and doing like impressions for my dentist. Like I was just so happy that there were people. I mean, they were all wearing masks, but I was having a very good time. Who isn't? Everybody is. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. Well, how are you holding up overall? 
I think I'm doing okay, man. You know, um, there's, you know, it, it's, uh, it's hard, you know, the, where I think where it gets hard is like, if people are going, the, someone, you know, is going through a hard time or this is like, you know, someone's sick or someone's old and you want to spend time with them. Uh, but it's, you're kind of being told not to like, that's where this thing kind of gets a little difficult. But my, my dog is freaking out. Um, but I've got to spend a lot of time with my dog. And this is, uh, that's Billy Donut. She's a pug and she's fat. <laughs> um, so I've got, to, I've got to spend. Well, we don't want her to get Corona because she seems like she's already got a breathing disorder. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. Okay, okay, okay. Relax. Sorry. It's okay. Um, it's cute. That's good. That's good visual stuff for the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Relax. 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 What does Jelly Donut want? Attention. Um, she she sometimes gets very excited and then she starts making that noise. Um, you know, she just, just came home. Yeah, she just she just can't deal. Like. Uh, you know, like if we're taking, if I take, I take her for a walk, she gets, she goes to like excitement level 10, you know, but if we run into a friend while we're out walking, it's like, she, she kicks it. It's like 22, you know, mm-hmm. and then she just can't, she can't hang. She starts freaking out or, or, uh, or, or like doing that, making that noise. She has trouble breathing. She'll start freaking out. It's okay. I mean, it's just an excitement thing. Now she's fine. You know? I love it. That's cute. That's that's that happens to who that happens to all of us every now and again. <laughs> it really does. It really does. You yeah. Can't deal. Well, I I was um I agree with what you're saying a bit about um because you hear stories, especially some of our friends and some people in comedy like Lori Kilmartin who lost her mom during this and hearing how that she, she was like barely able to see her mom during that time period and had to do a lot of it through iPad and stuff. And that struck me very hard. And I was like, Oh man, I'm so grateful that that's not uh, happening to me. But it it's also sometimes there's this so weird stress to me that like you, because you feel like you can't complain. It also is, there's a stress in that, you know, because I'm like, oh, it still sucks for me. I still, <laughs> I still yeah. am not having a great time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it, it, ta- it takes a little while to kind of like know that, like, you know, people, there's a lot of like comparing people uh, constantly, you know, are like, sorry, I'm moving my camera. Um, uh, there's a lot of like comparing, like people are like, oh, you know, well, yeah, but you, you know, be, be grateful that you don't have this or be grateful about that or, or like, okay, you know, yeah, but you're not sick. You could be sick or, oh, well, you know, you could, you could be, but it's like this type of thing affects everybody. And, and we're all, everyone's, everyone has their own life. And just because somebody else is going through a rough time, doesn't mean it may help you with perspective, but it doesn't mean that you aren't also dealing with, some stress because of it you know like it's okay to feel stressed it's okay to get depressed sometimes like i mean you you try your best to to like live a you know like you know live in a healthy way and and um and you know be happy for the things that you have and stuff but if you go i always say like if you're going if i'm going if i'm feeling depressed or i'm I'm having a hard time and then I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to let myself have this a little bit, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give myself, you know, you know, five, six hours to just feel bad if I have to feel bad. And then I'm like, all right, let's fucking get in the car and go to, go to a toy store or go take our dogs <laughs> for a walk, go to a comic book shop, you know, like do something, do something, get out, you know? Yeah, I think that's an important distinction because I think sometimes people get sold a false positivity or they fall into a false positivity of like, well, at least I'm not this. Like you said, just always comparing. And and to me, sometimes that's just denying 
your feelings and 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 that could be just as harmful to me as dwelling on it as being depressed on it um so yeah i'm a firm believer in not like denying your feelings or admiring in your feelings but just passing letting them pass through you like water and um yeah i felt the same way yesterday i just was bummed out i had a um most of my gigs have been canceled, of course. And then I had a couple for the summer that I was like, okay, well, these still might happen. And then I got a call back and then they wanted to renegotiate my deal at like, they wanted to come back at like 40% of my original offer. And so. Ooh. It, <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you there, man. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had to, you know, and, and that, but even in that, there was still a decision of like, oh, I was still, I would, I would love to go do comedy. I love comedy. I would like to go, but also I have, I, if I'm going, I'm bringing my feature and, and now I'm all right. Okay. Well, now we're getting, we're, and I got to pay my manager. I got to pay my agent and traveling. Now we're getting close to me not making money on this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I no, I know. I get it, man. I get it. I mean, you know, and, and then like certain things, you know, like, um, you know, it's, it, certain things are fascinating uh, how they work out. Cause it's like, you're in, uh, trolls world tour, right? Yes. So trolls world tour premiered, uh, in, in the theater or only at home, only at home. Right now so, available on DVD. So the but the thing is is that like because I was in Storks, the Warner Brothers movie, so that made you know a couple hundred million dollars at the at the movie theater. Then it went to HBO and on demand, this kind of stuff, right? So the kids where I made real money from doing Storks was on demand and uh, and people buying it at home because you don't really i didn't make anything from the from the movie being released i had like literally eight months after the like it was like eight months from the time the movie ended to when i actually started seeing any any income from the movie being out right so but with with the way that yours came out it's like for sag and for residuals and stuff that is going to be extremely extremely awesome because even though it's you know it's not as fun because you didn't get the big movie premiere and the red carpet and all that kind of stuff uh you didn't go and do the you know i know you did some like talk show stuff but not as much as you would have done it's like that movie is literally getting bought like crazy and it's being run on on demand like all the time it's like roku on demand and and itunes i just see it pop up all the time so it's going to be big for you when that when that pays out which will be awesome thank you very much that just made me feel a lot better I <laughs> <laughs> it's so true it's really it's really a a, a crazy thing it, you know like like right before coronavirus hit uh I, uh, I, I've been working on a TV show for two, uh, a year and a half, two, almost two years with Mel Brooks. That mm -hmm. has been the biggest thing I've ever worked on in my life. And it's my, my childhood story of my mom. And, and it's uh, all about my mom in the early nineties and, uh, and very like reflective of like, Mel, like Mel Brooks grew up with a, basically with a single mother. And so like, I got to work at Brooks films in Culver city and work under Mel for, for like a year developing it and, and like, you know, doing all sorts of cool stuff with it. And then, you know, we have a script and we have like stuff and things and then everything, every, you know, basically Stop. there was some good stuff and then everything got shut down and it was like, hard because i can't i can't go see him like i can't go to his house or anything and that's difficult and then especially like yesterday was you know tricky because carl reiner passed yesterday morning and um thankfully he has um 
Kevin Salter, who's the head of his company with him and his family with him. But I, I just, I was, a, I was a wreck throughout the day a little. Cause I was like, I know how important he was to him. And I just, and I'm like, I know that I'm not as important, but I know I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the, in the world there. And I want to be able to help or, or cheer him up or be around. And I know I can't be. So it just, it's hard. It's hard when people are going through stuff like that, you know? Yeah, it really, it really is, especially at this time. Cause that's what, in ways though, it's kind of a beautiful reminder of how much we need each other and how much we have to have empathy with each other and pull together and not be, be so individualistic because when it all breaks down, it's not like where no one's like, oh, let me go out there and, and, and hustle my hustle my, my way out of this on my own, just me. You know, it's more like, <laughs> well, now I oh, who can I sit and watch Netflix with? Who can I chill with? Where's my jelly donut? Where's my friend? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, like my my girlfriend, she traveled. We've been together eight and a half years. And she travels all over the world most of the time and, and uh, is here, you know, here in L.A. a lot. But she's in India a lot and other countries working. And um, we we had to we basically got to spend three and a half months where she was here all the time. And we were having breakfast together every morning. And it was like, yeah, that's sure there's lots of negatives about what's happening but also i got to have blueberry pancakes every day and and you know sit across from my from this woman that i i know so well but getting you know i got to know her even better and and uh you know you know learn learn more stuff about her which was really nice it's funny to even think that you can learn new stuff after that amount of time you know it's just it's a crazy amount of time that's just also beautiful to hear yeah. but I mean, the longest relationship I think in LA I was in before this girl was like a month, two <laughs> months, couple months, maybe, you know, on and off stuff. So, yeah, you know, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy. What are you going to do? It's hard out do? here. It's hard out here. Oh, you know, you know how hard it is. It's difficult. What, what other type of stuff do you do to kind of like, you know, bring your uh, happiness, bring your joy up. What else? Type, what other type of stuff do you do? Oh, thank you for asking me. Um, one of my favorite things to do is like, uh, on especially now to differentiate the weekends and things. I like to on Saturday. I like to get play some like soul music, some nice R and B, maybe some Frankie Valley, maybe some Bobby Durant, Darren, Bobby Darren, maybe some um some may frankie beverly and maze maybe some you know who knows what it might be but i like to pump it up real loud which my fiance is not the biggest fan of she likes silence she is a big <laughs> fan of silence she likes quietness and just chillness and she lives in a house with me just dancing around all the time and my son <laughs> just hooing all the time and so some saturday morning she'll usually go out on a walk and then I'll just pump the music and dance and have a great time. Um, we've been playing through Super Mario World, just trying to go through the whole game, um, which I didn't, did not realize I had never done. I thought I had done it. I assumed I had. But um, I definitely at least had used some stars or some things to move around a bit because now I'm like, man, there's some levels here I've never seen before. Um, but we're on we're on World 7. We're getting close to Bowser's Castle. Um, and that's that's the thing and really working out has been very helpful for me just saying I, I swear to god if it hasn't been for at least having that like as a schedule keeper for me it's like okay i'm going to work out in the morning if i have nothing else to do then I, then i'll work out again at night um just to, so that i feel you know it feel something and then i get tired and i wear myself out yeah oh that makes sense man that's a very do the having a nice morning workout. That's something I'm missing right now, and I need to to uh, get get that back into my life for sure. Yeah, it just yeah. is very helpful with. I mean, just with everything with sleeping, with your focus and mental energy. I just 
my I never feel I have never feel better during this time period than when I wake up in the morning and then I'll, I'll meditate for 10 minutes with my fiance and then I'll go straight into my workout and then have breakfast and then like I feel the best. What do you have for breakfast? Like what's a typical breakfast? Oh, thank you for asking me. Uh, <laughs> what's a typical <laughs> I'm breakfast? I'm just curious. I'm so curious because like I'm trying to be better at breakfast. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm a terrible cook. I mean, tell I'm me like, what your typical breakfast is. Oh God. I mean, uh, I, I, tr- I mean, if I, remember I feel, sh- that- I feel shame coming from you and I don't want there to be any shame. I just mm-hmm. want you to talk to me about your breakfast and tell me what you're doing and we'll get better from there. Don't feel bad <laughs> about it. All right. I, so for breakfast, I'll do, uh, sometimes I'll do French toast. Um, if, uh, if I'm, you know, if I'm feeling real squirrely, maybe I'll have some French toast, maybe some <laughs> eggs. Um, a lot of times it's, um, a tortilla with, uh, two eggs scrambled in the tortilla. Sometimes I leave the tortilla out. I just do the, the, uh, the scrambled eggs and maybe some potatoes. Mm -hmm. Um, but I try to like do, you know, not just have it be toast, you know, um, or not just have it be like, you know, a cold chicken finger from the night before (laughs) I try really hard to like make an effort to have like a good breakfast, but, um, it's uh yeah that's a tricky that that's a tricky one for me and then the one thing i have been really trying to do is stop eating um anything that's not vegetables i'll try i'll i'll try to not eat after dark so mm-hmm. once it's dark out then it's like if i i have I've, I've had dinner and then if i want snacks or things like that it's like cucumbers and like yellow peppers and uh things like that i'll just eat them whole and uh, that's that's kind of what I'll do for the rest of the night. Okay, that's fun. It sounds like you got some some like good things on your path that you headed in the right direction. Um, me <laughs> lately, what what I've been doing is I've been trying to do the intermittent fasting, as uh, where um I don't usually eat breakfast until at least like about you try for 11 usually but sometimes like 10 30 10 45 and then i try to stop eating by eight o'clock so usually my dinner is like at 7 7 30 and then i try not to eat anything but sometimes i get high and then th- then i eat some things and uh before <laughs> yeah. but for breakfast um it's i mean the best i could tell you if you're looking for one change um the best best friend for a healthy breakfast is oatmeal that's what you get them still cold really? cut oats yeah just having a nice oatmeal maybe cut up some apples put a half an apple in there a quarter of an apple in there um and then like no other sugars really sometimes i put a little bit of almond butter but it depends on like if I've worked out or not, you know, if I haven't worked out, my breakfast is very lean. It's usually uh, oatmeal with just the apples in it with nothing else. And then uh, half of a protein shake. And that'll, that'll be my breakfast. And oh, then that's good. Yeah, it's not bad. And you know what it is? It's quick and efficient. And so I'm not like, you know, waiting around. I'm not cooking up a bunch of stuff. It's just the blender and then my oatmeal. And then that's it. And I'm, you know, back out doing my stuff. Usually I was going to say working, but actually now it's just playing a lot of video games uh, and and randomly writing. Uh, (laughs) But that's my breakfast. I have a, I, I, I got right before like coronavirus hit. I've, I've had the same like 35 inch, 40 inch like TV in the living room probably for i don't know like seven seven eight nine years maybe maybe 10 years i've had the same tv you know like i bought tv and i was like ah that's enough you know um and uh, and that was kind of it and then right before coronavirus like literally a month before um i picked up an 80 inch flat screen tv and a playstation 4 okay. and like 
just so I could play Spider-Man. And I, uh, and then coronavirus hit. And I mean, I, I love this freaking TV. I play everything on the TV. Uh, you know, and it's one of these digital TVs so you can change in, you can watch a, Netflix on it and all that stuff. And I'm like, I like, I finally feel like I've like, I know what, you know, what technology can do and stuff. Cause I, you know, like I'm now I like, I love, I play, um, I'm terrible at it, but I love call of duty mm-hmm. and, um, I don't put on the head, the headset very often, uh, to like talk to people while I'm playing, uh, because, if any, sometimes I'll turn the volume off completely and I'll be so much better at the game because it's less there's scary. No there's no, yeah, yeah there's no, yeah, there's it's no so dis- scary when it's all loud in your ears. It's so scary. Oh, yeah. And like you he- also, it's like if you hear a bullet go off in that game and, and it, if it hits you, you're dead, like basically almost immediately. So it's like, so then I don't really need to hear anything because I'm going <laughs> to, if I'm, if I'm going to get shot, I'm going to die. It's not like I can duck a bullet. I'm not, you know, it's not the matrix. So mm. I'll just play the game and, uh, and, and have fun with it and, you know, try to try to, you know, in, enjoy it. And then every once in a while I'll put on the headphones and it's just a bunch of eight year olds telling me I'm an asshole. So you know? <laughs> well, you're welcome to join my crew anytime. We got a group oh, that we on. run. We'll play some Warzone together. If you are a oh, regular multi, man. whatever you're into, we play every anytime. day. Anytime. So anytime. if you want to play, yeah, we'll, I'll give you my um my Activision uh ID or whatever. After this, we can. I'd love to that, play because that's best so to fun. play with adults. Yeah, it's a great game. It's so fun. You're absolutely wrong about not listening on a headset because you need positional hearing. Sometimes you can hear when people are above you or below you, or to the left of you or to the right of you, and it's very helpful. But also, I do understand what you're saying. Sometimes I'm I'm at my best in that game if I'm angry and focused because sometimes yeah. I'm scared and overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah scared and overwhelmed is not a great way to be in in the army you know <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of not a lot of soldiers getting a lot of getting a lot of kills if they're running around just going ah and they're just doing this the whole time you know there's <laughs> hiding um i, like I should that. also tell you happy canada day oh thank you so much i appreciate mm-hmm. that i love canada that's I, I'm, I'm originally from London, Ontario, but my entire family is from uh, Cote St. Luke in Montreal, which is like a very small little Jewish neighborhood. So when we when our family moved to we moved to San Diego, my uh, when I when I was a kid and we were the only Jews in our neighborhood and I was the only Jewish kid at my school. And then the only Jewish kid at my junior high school, except for one other kid, but he was in the closet uh, as a, a Jew. So he would tell everybody uh, that he, that he, you know he celebrated Christmas, and and his name was Judah. That's his <laughs> name. It was it was Judah, and he was pretending to not be Jewish. It was hilarious, uh, to say the least. But yeah, it's great. I mean, I love. I love uh, I love San Diego. It's beautiful down there, but Canada is just gorgeous. You know, yeah, tr- truly love it. God country. Um, what you- started your love of entertainment? You're such a great showman. People who don't know you, you host one of the best shows that I ever go to at the Improv. Um, oh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, you you did um, the nighttime show, which is my podcast. Is was originally. Like uh, originally we would just do it on stage and have comedians perform and then we would talk on the couch. And then we were like, why don't we just do this as a podcast and stop, you know, change, change the, change the, the way that we do it a little bit. Um, and I, 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 you, I mean, you've been, you did, you did the show, I think twice and you crushed both times to where we were like all in tears. It was amazing. Uh, but yeah, I, got into uh i mean entertainment man when i was a kid 
it was all about cartoons and it was all about um there's a lot of comedy in my family like everybody was really funny and uh you know it, it, at when we would have like thanksgiving or like jewish holidays things like this we would all sit around and everyone would tell funny stories you know while the coffee was being served and stuff and uh and getting a laugh from the family was like a really big deal and um like my grandmother was hilarious and uh my my grandfather would like you know whatever joke you know like she whatever story she would tell he would react and it would be great and funny and and these these were you know hilarious and Hor- horrifying stories like you know she pulled practical jokes on him back in like the 1950s she like they'd get into a fight and she'd send him a sandwich you know in his lunch pail but it would be a sock between the bread you know with just a note like next time pick up your socks you know things like in the 50s people weren't doing stuff like this but she was doing this and then like i had a bunch of uncles that are you know loud and they would interrupt and step on every, you know, they, they tag a joke. Like you would be telling a story and they would, they would do the punchline before you could get to it, you know? <laughs> and, um, so there was a lot of like love for comedy and then, um, a lot of stand up in the house. We would, my mom, uh, bought me a lot of stand up albums when I was, uh, 12, 13 years old to just kind of help me get through adolescence. She got me George Carlin, and Eddie Murphy, um, Dennis Leary, and Pauly Shore's album. Mm. The the one of him leaping up in the air with Mitzi uh, on the beginning of the album. And like I listened to those albums nonstop every day. Like I memorized them. It was, you know, it was a big deal. And then in you know, and like when it came to like movies and TV shows, I I was like obsessed with with uh robin williams in aladdin i was obsessed with uh eddie murphy and coming to america that he had played all these different characters in the same scene with arsenio like i thought that was the most amazing thing in the world and i just wanted to do all of that like i was just i didn't know how to do it or i didn't we didn't have anyone in our family that was in entertainment but you know so it was just like you know a lot of guessing, but the only thing, the only way in that I really had was doing live theater, like doing plays. And, um, in San Diego, there was a lot of community theater. So I, Mm -hmm. I did a lot of musicals and a lot of like, uh, you know, stuff like that. And that kind of led to me going to school for it in New York and then touring in a musical or two. And then, uh, you know, finding my way to, to stand up and, and then on from there, you know, but were you in Shrek the musical? Is that what I, w- I read? Yeah, I was, I, I, uh, was working at the comedy store as the phone operator upstairs and as the backdoor bouncer. And this was like in the old dirty days of the comedy store where it was like kind of a nasty place to hang out. And a guy named Eric Marino, do you know Eric Marino? He's a comic. Uh, he came up and, and, and was like, hey, they're casting. They're looking for someone to play Shrek in the Shrek musical on Broadway. And I was like, oh, great. Why don't you uh, go tell someone who cares? Like, I was like, why are, you, why are you bothering me? Like, I don't, I don't do musical stuff anymore. I'm not really into that kind of stuff and, you know, whatever. And he was like, no, no, dude, it's perfect for you. You should go in. And I blew it off and two months later he came back and was like hey they're casting it again they still haven't found someone you should go in and audition you really should go and audition for this thing it's good you have a great time and so i was like ah told my family and they were like why are you not going they were mad that i hadn't already gone but i just was like i don't it's not they're not gonna cast me i'm a nobody like why would i be the guy for that you know and um and so i went in and uh me and like a hundred fat guys sat around in a room in burbank at screenland studios and i had a discolored half black and white half color headshot 
that was just garbage that I'd printed off my aunt's computer and I'd handwritten some of my resume skills on. And, uh, um, uh, I, I was going to sing the, the, the bare necessities. Cause I figured like Shrek's a big guy and, and you know, the character from sings bare necessities, Baloo, he's a big guy. Like uh, something, maybe there's something there. They're both cartoons. I don't know. And a guy turned to me in the audition and said, you know, it's a rock musical. You should be seeing rock for this. If you're auditioning for the Shrek parts. And I was like, well, then I should just leave because I don't have anything else. And I went out to my car, opened the trunk. And in my trunk was the Ray Charles songbook that I kept with me for like piano gigs because I play the piano. And I was like, all right, I'll do this, I guess. And I walked in with the Ray Charles book and I sang What I Say by Ray Charles and uh, got the part of Shrek in the Shrek musical. And I'm cutting it short a little bit, but no joke. Um, I owe an enormous amount. I had 32 callbacks for the role. So it took three months of doing callbacks every few days to, uh, to get the part. And, and I got, I had guys like Bobby Lee uh, run lines with me out on the street in front of the club. I had, uh, impressionists like, you know, uh, com other comedians that I was able to ask them for their advice on how I should do it. And, uh, you know, and, and run, I ran lines with every comic on the lineup. Everybody gave me advice and, uh, helped me, you know, figure out funnier jokes and things. And, and then, uh, they cast me as Shrek and they cast Dean Edwards as the donkey <laughs> from Saturday night live. And then uh, Dean and me became like best friends and we gigged together and we, we did tons of shows together in New York and we got to work with like Sutton Foster and um, Sam Mendez and Jeff Katzenberg and David Geffen. And we spent two years working on the show in, in New York. And then uh, uh, that uh, kind of ended uh, like my reign on the show ended right before it opened on Broadway. I was let go and paid off basically so that they could bring in like a big Broadway star. And, uh, I got royalties on the show for 20 years. Nice. So anytime the, the, the musical gets done anywhere in the world, they send me a little check for it. And for, it's not a ton of money, but you know, for a few years there, it was incredibly helpful uh, you know, um, and that, that kind of, I got really lucky in that when Shrek ended for me and I got back to LA, I was back here in LA for maybe uh, two months. And then I got cast on Nickelodeon on big time rush and then did five years straight of, of a TV show. And that, you know, changed my whole life. So, I mean, it's crazy, man. It is this business is so magical and weird. And honestly, like the thing that brings me a great deal of happiness is I have a piano in my kitchen and a ton of Broadway sheet music. And anytime I'm like kind of feeling down or I'm, I need a little pick me up or something. I'll sit down on the piano, open up a, little, a, a, a Broadway song book of, Les Mis or this or that and I'll just go through and sing through the show or do I'll go on Instagram live and you know perform a, a song or I'll just do it by myself for myself you know and uh until my girlfriend comes in and puts her finger in my ear or something you know and tries to <laughs> annoy me while I'm <laughs> while I'm singing you know oh she's annoying you <laughs> oh yeah no, that's, yeah yeah she's like I'm working over here you know, <laughs> but yeah, for sure. We she'll do that for sure. Anytime. I think that's a beautiful story. And to me, it shows a lot of like the magic of comedy and stuff is that, uh, especially in the last few weeks, people have gotten away from because of, uh, uh, the things like, you know, the predatory, the sexual predators. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
which is uh, I'm just happy that stuff is getting called out and getting dealt with. But I think that I've I've been seeing a lot of people who then are like, this is what comedy is all about. And this is what all these guys all are. And I think you just told a really great story about how it is a community that gathers around people and tries to help, especially if someone had, and it's not just you. That's a story that's been told a million times. I remember like, you know, Tiffany and Tiffany Haddish at the comedy store running lines and running stuff and and getting ready for something before, you know? There was uh, I, there was a lot of help. I mean, there was no sense from any, and there was no competition sense. And I think a lot. I was it was lucky in the sense that like I I was auditioning for a Broadway musical yeah. that like I I I was afraid to tell the other comics that I was being considered for a Broadway musical because I thought even though that's what I went to school for, I thought it it would discredit me as an, as a comedian because I would be, you know, like a multi hyphenist. I'd be someone who does more than just comedy, but like, you know, as we've, you know, kind of come to learn everybody is all, all of us now, like that's very celebrated now. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a comedian, they expect that you're also a writer and that you are also uh, can go in and do voiceover work and that you can do all these other things. And the more skills that you bring to the table, like the better, the better the situation is. And I, I was a little afraid of kind of like, I was afraid of letting people know that I, I could play the piano, let alone that I was uh, a, a musical theater person who had mm-hmm. this crazy Broadway education and knew all this, you know, you know, could could name the uh, original cast of Into the Woods. Like, you know, that was like not something that like the comics at the t- I, I felt like they wouldn't be uh, supportive, but everyone was. And maybe it's because it wasn't a threat to them. Like they weren't worried that I was going to be taking something away from them by getting that part. But um, they were all very supportive. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like, bro stuff that happens in, in comedy and uh, these days. And I, I, I watch a lot of it and there's a lot of incredibly funny people, but you know, comics are weird. You know, there's a lot of, you know, like the people that I'm, that I admire and am like a real fan of that make me laugh till like it hurts are weird comics, you know, like Brent Weinbach, it doesn't get much, more bizarre you know in a performance than than like weinbach or like watching you know watching like Patton oswald like watching him perform or or gaffigan or maria bamford i mean i own every single maria bamford album that's ever come out like i'm like a stupid fan i performed with her one time and i ate shit because i couldn't fucking follow her i was too nervous i was like this is too weird but like TJ Miller, TJ Miller and me did uh, stand up together once at the improv. And then after doing it, I got cast on a TV show he was on called Carpoolers. And he gave me a, like a set tour and he was so nice, overly nice. And then um, he called me one day and was like, hey, I'm performing for all of DreamWorks. The entire DreamWorks animation studio is coming into the Laugh Factory would you host the show? And it turned into like a huge opportunity for me. So there, there is definitely a lot of looking out for other people in this business, which is nice, you know? Absolutely. I just wish, I wish that like the, like women in comedy were treated better. Like I always treat women in comedy really well, but like, and I'm friends with a lot of female comics, but my God, like you, you know, some of the stories that come out about the way that some of these ladies are treated. It's just like, I think that might be the hardest type. It might be w- at least one of the hardest type of comedians to be in this business. It just seems very difficult. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a, uh, and it's, it's, I just always try to, I mean, I just 
do on the others is I think you try to keep it very simple of like people help me. And so I try to help others and I don't care if they look like me or they're my same gender or uh, in particular, I met some that when I was very younger where people were like help, help women that you're not attracted to. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I get you. I get it. Yeah. And so it's like, I just tried, but it is, I think in so much people get caught up in like, their story so much that they only then want to help people that they think are had the same background and same story and same um you know someone that they see themselves in and for too many men in power they they can't have they don't have that empathy to see themselves as the, the grind that this woman has gone through this this perspective this woman has gone through and that's why i think it's often needs to start there that there needs to be more women at the head of these executive levels because those are my favorite people too and not just for women but for me as well the people who are most receptive of my ideas are are the like intelligent bright forward-thinking women and then they got to go take it to somebody else who goes i don't like it <laughs> totally yeah you need you need to have like when when we started when i started working uh with mel on this show I was like, the show is basically about my mom. She's the main character in the show. So um, we got really lucky and we got to work with Gail Berman for a while on the show. And, and Gail Berman was the, she, she's produced uh, like an enormous amount of television, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, all that kind of stuff. But uh, she also was the, the, the president of Paramount Pictures at one point she was the president of Fox and it was like having a, having a woman be like one of the big executives involved in your project and stuff, the amount of just, just what it brings to the, to the energy of it. And, you know, you're, you, you know, you're, you know, like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm writing about my own family and my own stuff, but it's like, it's nice to be able to, have someone in there that can bring other perspectives to the, to the, you know, thing, you know, to the project. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you want with any project. The more angles you can look at it, the easier the puzzle is to solve. Oh, oh, sure. What are some of your goals right now in life? Um, I need to, to buy less action figures. I, my, I, I mean, this is so we're in my office right now um and then it's all it's all toys everything everywhere all the way around to the top uh of somewhere in the realm of i don't know 400 action figures in my office so less action figures maybe um i need to not do that um like I was talking to my manager the other day and I go, uh, I was like, Oh, I got to interview, um, Todd McFarlane on the podcast. You know, you know, Spider-Man created mm-hmm. Venom, created Spawn. Right. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, Oh, that's really nice. And I go, yeah. And he gave me eight action figures when he showed up from, from uh, DC multiverse. I was so excited. And he was like, really, Steven, this is what you need more toys you don't need more wonder woman <laughs> action figures so i need to buy less toys that is a big uh goal um i am i'm i'm writing my first animated feature and i'm 25 pages in and i've written the last 10 and i'm trying to fill in the middle mm-hmm. so that i have something uh to to show people and take around to you know studios and things like that i would really like to finish that script and you should just um, on each page you should just write this part's good too <laughs> <laughs> absolutely one um, page is right trust me <laughs> these pages are gonna be great and i just keep writing them on the middle pages <laughs> this page is gonna be awesome Trust me on that. Um, and, you know, trying to learn, uh, you know, as I'm going, to learning more about, like, about screenwriting and about, you know, stuff. Even though I've 
I've written professionally now for like a couple different networks and and done some big stuff. Uh, I feel like you know le- you know relearning and learning new skills. I'm trying to learn how to animate, which is really difficult. Um, but I've made a couple animated shorts so far that are that where I've hand drawn them and and done them in like you know frame by frame like type animation and um yeah and i really and i just want to eat eat healthier and and live physically healthier and get get up in the morning and and go do some exercise so that i'm not i'm not going right from breakfast to sitting at my desk and making phone calls you know because yeah well i've been really focusing on that more too just because um um and and some of it was from like thinking about Carl Reiner a bit and just how long and um, beautiful a life and a career that is and how that, you know, say that at least we, we've already lost three months. We're going to probably lose at least six months, if not a year, year and a half, two years. Who knows? And so to I was really focusing on like, well, that means I have to... Um, get my health together more so that I have more opportunity on that back end, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because you want to be, you want to be like 70, 80 years old and be healthy enough to be able to go and work and, and make things and continue the, the process of doing fun stuff. I mean, you know, like uh, I watched that TV show, Hollywood, the uh, Ryan Murphy show that he did at netflix and uh rob reiner shows up and does a great like a great job as like the head of the studio on the thing and like he's healthy as a horse man like something you know he, he's a big guy too it's like i talked to uh ethan supplee do you know do you know him from uh he's he's great and he said that like you can be healthy and also be big like mm-hmm. you don't have to i mean you being like 400 pounds is not a good idea, but like you can be like 260, 270 and still be a healthy person. You just have to like take, you got to take care of your, of your stuff. You can't just like hope that it's going to be okay. And, um, cause I think he said that he got down to 240 and he went into a doctor and they were like, yeah, you're still obese. And he was like, yeah, but all I've eaten for the last six months is nothing but chicken, salad, and I bicycle eight, like three or four hours a day. Like, what else can I possibly do to lose? Wait, I, this is as small as I can possibly get. And they were like, I don't know what to tell you. And then he went and saw another health person, and they were like, You're fine. You're always going to be big because you are a tall, big dude. Like, mm-hmm. It's just, you know, like sometimes it's just your frame. Yeah. There's just different types of frames of people. And it's like not an excuse, but also like you can, you can manage things. Like at one point in my life, I was 385 pounds and I dropped down to 265 and I was, I felt so good. Now I'm like, 290 or so and i i'm i just want to get back down so i'm like yeah trying to make an effort it's hard hitting that threes yeah hitting those threes makes you feel you that you feel the difference i know my heaviest was 360 and 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 yeah and then once i got under three i was like i don't ever want to be over three again and when i was under 250 i was the same way and now it just ebbs and flows and um yeah i just gotta get I, I'm still working on the mental aspect of like, oh, I am just a also a big guy. I'm not going to probably lose 40 more pounds and some, become some weight of a dude. I'm just going to be a big dude, but I look good, look healthy. I feel shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I love it. That's great. That's great. Well, I got to ask you one more question and I got to wrap it up and I got to go. Anything. Um, we just like to ask for a piece of advice for a little nugget of, of help, a little piece of joy you could share with our getting better community to help us get better. Ooh. 
Um, okay. I'll say this. Um, gotta listen to your instincts. They are there for a reason. And you, especially creatively, if there is something that you feel like you need to do, or uh, it, it can, it doesn't, it, even if it doesn't make any sense, or it's, you know, it seems impossible. If you spend time and you spend your energy and you educate yourself to be able to do the thing properly, you'll, you'll, whether you succeed financially or just succeed from accomplishing the thing, that's, you know, you'll, it'll, it'll happen for you. And I think that's something that like has, it took me a long time to figure out. Like, um, I'll give you an example. Um, I always wanted to have a t-shirt with my face on it. That was for sale at hot topic. Okay. It's very specific goal, but I would go into hot topic. And I'd see all the things and I would go, Oh man, it would be so cool if I could like, I was on this TV show. Like maybe, maybe someday they'd be interested. Maybe someday they'd reach out. Maybe someday, maybe someday, maybe someday. And of course that never happened. They, they don't care about me and my stupid face, but I care about me and my stupid face. And I was like, okay, I'm going to draw something. So I, okay, so I drew this drawing of my face, this, this drawing. Okay. And then I took, um, I like, I was like, Oh, I look good on a t-shirt. I think that'd be cool. That'd be a cool t-shirt. And I was like, I wonder if I could get hot topic to like put this on their shelves, do something. Right. And I, uh, I was like, I don't know anybody at hot topic. So I call, I went on LinkedIn and I looked up the company and then I, researched to see all the people that work at the company. And then I sent all every single one of them a friend request on LinkedIn. And then, and then those that accepted, I sent them a message saying, hi, I was, I used to be on a TV show a million years ago. And I think we should make a t-shirt with my face on it. And here's what the shirt would look like. And I sent them picture, a picture of my, of me in my stupid fake t-shirt. And I think I wrote like 40 people and one person wrote back and said, we're thinking about starting a new like artist, uh, like art, like one, like a, like a digital online deal where we would sell shirts for, for people or influencers, things like this. Uh, would you like to be part of that first group of people and we'll do a line for you, but it's only available online. And I was like, yes, absolutely. And I have made, tens of dollars off of this deal i made basically nothing but it looks but it for me it was like i i wanted to do something i don't know how anyone who's ever like owned a t-shirt company or makes things like that and i was like i'm gonna figure out a way to get to the place and i'll take all the steps that i can possibly do so you know and i'm like you know uh, as a, as like a chubby Jewish guy that used to be on a Nickelodeon show 10 years ago. Like who cares that it is a far cry from like what they're putting on, what, what companies would, would, you know, bank on. But I, I fought for it because I thought it was a cool idea. And you know, the people who have bought it, the, uh, the 15 people that have bought that shirt thought it was very cool and has sent me lots of pictures, uh, you know, saying that they were happy with it. And that was neat. It was neat just to be able to accomplish the thing. And so I think that's really what this is, what I'm trying to say is that like, you know, you know, it was a long shot ending up playing Shrek. It was a long shot ending up on Nickelodeon. It's a long shot uh, doing an animated movie. You know, these are all long shots, but it's like if you believe in yourself and you do your research and you learn about the business you want to be a part of, you you have a much greater chance of making it happen. Yeah, you're showing respect by doing your research and showing that you care and that you're not just trying to get things from it. And I think a lot of what you're saying about the the Shrek thing as well was a, a um, lesson in in 
being yourself and a lesson in being your true self and following the path that you had already been on. You'd already gone to school for it and you were afraid to do it because you were worried about how other people would view you and what, what being a comedian meant in their eyes. But by following Absolutely. your true self and being you, you were able to do something completely unique and, and be something that some, someone else couldn't do. I couldn't do that. So, you know, I think that's, um, that's such a beautiful thing to, to have accomplished. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the podcast. Can you tell people, maybe tell them where they can get the shirt. Maybe tell them where they can <laughs> see you and listen to your podcast. <laughs> um, you can always, you can always get me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok talk at steven glickman s-t-e-p-h-e-n glickman g-l-i-c-k-m-a-n um so at steven glickman on twitter instagram youtube and tiktok uh my podcast is called the nighttime show and you can get it on the itunes and um uh and then if you want to get one of the shirts you can always go to hot topic and just look up glickman and it pops right up that's uh, uh my my proud t-shirt story <laughs> well, thank you for coming and making my day a little bit brighter you're always such a, a, a beacon of joy and happiness and so i'm glad to, to catch up with you you too buddy you too good to see you stay safe out there okay you too thank you guys for listening bye all right bye bud. if you enjoyed that episode you might want to look at our last episode located right here and perhaps you want a special episode picked just for you by our overlords at youtube right there and do not forget to subscribe